Hello and welcome to this last ex second look exploring session at Thomas of Woodstock, this fabulous, fabulous play, uh, as we go into Act 4, Scene 2, uh, into the end of the text. The story so far, Richard II has gained power and has just had enough of those interfering uncles. He would have got away with it too if it wasn't for those pesky uncles. Uh, he's busy uh, carving up the country and, uh, and outsourcing it, uh, the, the generation of uh, revenue uh, to his various caterpillar friends and uh, and and uh, Woodstock's eff effectively gone into exile into semi-retirement in his house in Plashy but Richard's coming for him Richard's gonna go for him and um, and have him kidnapped and taken out uh, out of uh, the country so so yeah it's all it's all kicking <coughs> off um, uh, we're going to be reading this straight through we're gonna be uh, attempting uh, to uh, give it a bit of life uh, we can't fully enact the mask that occurs. We can't fully enact the battle scenes. We're just going to give you the idea of what's going on there without necessarily all of the business. There's some marching on and off that does, we're not going to do. Uh, there won't be uh, lots of sound effects. We're just, as I say, giving you the idea as we get into how this play flows rather than stopping and starting and talking our way through it all the time. Uh, and of course, it's just a bit of fun at the end of a long, not just a uh, week, but also uh, a, a long year as uh, this is probably one of our our last big uh, exploring sessions of 2020 and uh, and we're just letting our hair down as it were uh, so a uh, reading today we are non-continuity Richard as we've had a different Richard every day uh, reading rich King Richard the second is hello I'm Pamela I'm an actor based in London uh, reading one of his terrible followers uh, green as well as the black prince is Excuse you, I am his partner, uh, Liza Graham, actor, singer, and Shakespearean text coach, two actors in London. And uh, also one of the other caterpillars, Bagot, as well as Crosby, is... Hello, I'm Dan, I'm an actor based in Montpellier, France, also playing Stills and Nash. <laughs> and uh, one, of, uh, one, one of the uh, other reprobates uh, following uh, Richard around, Bushy, is played by... Hello, I'm Lynn. I'm a college writing teacher. I live in the Northwestern United States. And even further down the minion scale, reading Scroop and Fleming is... I am Eric, and I'm, I'm just wondering, do they ever become butterflies or no? No, no, they really don't. Uh, no spoilers really there, people. Um, uh, f further down, but perhaps further up, uh, depending on your point of view, reading the uh, the... The fixer, Tresillian, and also the Duchess of Gloucester is... Alexandra, and today again, I'm all about that sweet, sweet continuity. And <laughs> uh, reading uh, uh, the, the, the assistant, uh, also classmate of Tresillian, Nimble, and a second murderer is... Hello, I'm Sarah Blake. I'm an actor, writer and director living in Germany. Uh, uh, reading a uh, uh, shreve of uh, Northumberland and first murderer is... Hello, I'm Valentina and I'm an, an actor and voiceover artist in London. Uh, reading the shreve of Kent and also the, the moderately murderous Le Poul is... Aliki Chapel, I'm an actor, a writer, translator, theatre maker, based in the north of England. And uh, that's most of the uh, the reprobate uh, side of the uh, the coin. Uh, what, re on the more uh, older, wiser, more noble side, uh, reading York as well as a gentleman today is. Hi, I'm Alan Scott, based in Suffolk. And uh, reading uh, Lancaster as well as a servant is. Hello, I'm Helen Good. I'm a historian, and I'm in Yorkshire. Uh, reading the, the the really nice, decent, decent person, Cheney is. I am Lois, a retired academic living in London. And then uh, reading Surrey, as well as the ghost of Edward III, is. Hi, my name's Elizabeth Lucille, I'm also based in Romford. Uh, and reading Arundel, a soldier, as well as the personification of Cynthia, is. Hello, I'm Emma. Uh, I'm an actor and I'm looking forward to some multi-rolling today. Mm, and uh, I think that's covered everyone except for uh, Thomas of Woodstock himself. I'm your host, Robert Crichton, and today I will be reading uh, Thomas of Woodstock. And, uh, and hopefully uh, it's all going to turn out well for me. 
Uh, <laughs> all that remains is to clear the stage. If we can all go to black, and in a moment, the two principals will enter the stage from blackness after a little moment of just getting into character. The queen, so sick, come, come, make haste, good wife, Th thou be belated short, is night already, uh, on with thy cloak and, uh, and mask, to horse, to horse. Good troth, my lord, I have no mind to ride, I have been dull and heavy all this day, my sleeps were troubled with sad dreams last night, and I am full of fear and heaviness, pray, pray let me ride tomorrow. What, and the queen so sick, away for shame. Stay for a dream? Thou'st dreamt, I'm sure, ere this. Never so fearful were my dreams till now. Had they concerned myself, my fears were past, but you were made the object of mine eye, and I beheld you murdered cruelly. Huh. Murdered? Oh, lack, good lady, didst thou dream of me? Take comfort, then. All dreams are contrary. Pray God it prove so, but my soul is fearful. The vision did appear so lively to me, methought, as you were raging through the woods, an angry lion with a herd of wolves had in an instant round encompassed you when to your rescue against the course of kind, a flock of silly sheep made head against them, bleating for help, against whom the forest king roused up his strength and slew both you and them. This fear affrights me. Oh, for my God, thou art foolish. I I'll tell thee all thy dream. Thou knowest last night we had some private talk about the blanks, the countries taxed with all, where I compared the state as now it stands, meaning King Richard and his harmful flatterers, unto a savage herd of ravening wolves the commons to a flock of silly sheep, who, whilst their slothful shepherd careless stood, those forest thieves broke in and sucked their blood. And this thy apprehensions took so deep, the form was portrayed lively in thy sleep. Come, come, tis nothing. What, uh, are, are her horses ready? Uh, they are, my lord. Where? is the gentleman that brought this message. Uh, where lies the Queen? At Sheen, my lord, most sick and so much altered as those about her fear her sudden death. Ah, oh, forfend it, heaven. Uh, away, make haste, I charge ye. What, weeping now for my God thou art fond? Come, come. I know thou art no augurer of ill. Dry up thy tears. This kiss and part. Farewell. That farewell from your lips to me sounds ill. Where'er I go, my fears will follow still. See her to horseback, Cheney. For God, tis late. And but important business craves such haste she had not gone from Plashy House tonight. But woe is me, the good Queen Anne is sick, and by my soul my heart is sad to hear it. So good a lady, and so virtuous, this realm for many years could not boast of. Her charity have stayed the commons' rage that would ere this have shaken Richard's chair, or set all England on a burning fire. And for my God... God, I fear when she is gone, this woeful land will all to ruin run. How, how now, Cheney? Uh, what, is uh, thy lady gone yet? She is, my lord, uh, with much unwillingness, and tis so dark I cannot blame her grace. The lights of heaven are shut in pitchy clouds, and flakes of fire run tilting through the sky like dim ostents to some great tragedy. God bless good Anne Abeam. I fear her death will be the tragic scene the sky foreshows us. When kingdoms change, the very heavens are troubled. Pray, 
God, King Richard's wild behaviour forced not the powers of heaven to frown upon us. My prayers are still for him. What thinks thou? Cheney may not plain Thomas live a time to see this state attain her former royalty, for God, I doubt it not. My heart is merry, and I'm suddenly inspired for mirth. <laughs> oh, what sport shall we have tonight, Cheney? I'm glad to hear your grace addicted so, for I have news of sudden mirth to tell ye, which till I heard you speak, I durst not utter. We shall have a mask tonight, my lord. <laughs> A mask, sayest thou? What are they, Janie? Uh, it seems, my lord, some country gentlemen, to show their dear affection to your grace, proffer their sports this night to make uh, you marry. Uh, their drums have called for entrance twice already. Are they so near? I, I prithee let them enter. Uh, uh, tell them we do embrace their loves most kindly. Give, give, give order through the house that all observe them. <laughs> We must accept their loves, although the times are no way suited now for masks and revels. What ho, we're in there. My lord? I'll prepare a banquet, uh, call for lights and music. Uh, they come in love and we'll accept it so. Uh, some sport does well. Uh, we're all too full of woe. Uh, they're come, my lord. Ah, they all are welcome, Cheney. Uh, set me a chair, we will behold their sports in spite of care. Uh, what is first? Ah! From the clear orb of our ethereal sphere, bright Cynthia comes to hunt and revel here. The groves of Caledon and Arden woods of untamed monsters, wild and savage herds. We and our knights have freed and hither come to hunt these forests where we hear there lies a cruel and tusked boar whose terror flies through this large kingdom and with fear and dread strikes her a massed greatness pale and dead. And having viewed from far these towers of stone, we heard the people, midst their joy and moan, extol to heaven a faithful prince and peer that keeps a court of love and pity here, reverent and mild his looks. If such there be, this state directs, great prince, that you are he. And ere our knights to this great hunting go, before your grace they would some pastime show in sprightly dancing, thus they bade me say, and wait an answer to return or stay. Nay, for heaven's pity, let them come, I prithee, pretty divisive faith. Stand by, uh, make room there. Uh, stir, stir, good fellows, each man to his task. We shall have a clear night. The moon directs a mask. <laughs> ah, country sports, say ye? For God, tis courtly. Oh, general welcome, courteous gentlemen. Uh, and uh, when I see your faces, I'll give each man more particular. If your entertainment fail your merit, I must ask... Pardon. Uh, my lady is from home, and most of my attendants waiting on her, but uh, we'll do what we can to bid you all welcome. For, my God, it joys my heart to see amidst these days of woe and misery ye find a time for harmless mirth and sport. But uh, tis your loves, and we'll be thankful for it. Ah! 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 Sirrah! You come like knights to hunt the boar indeed, and heaven he knows we had need of helping hands. Oh, so many wild boars root and spoil our lands that England almost is destroyed by them. I care not if King Richard heard me speak it. I wish his grace all good. I heaven can tell, but 
There's a fault in some, alack the day. <laughs> His youth is led by flatterers much astray, but he's our king and God's great deputy and if ye hunt to have me second ye in any rash attempt against his state afore my god i'll ne'er consent unto it i ever yet was just and true to him and will so still remain what's now amiss our sins have caused and we must bid heaven's will i uh, i speak my heart i am plain thomas still come Come, a hall and music there, your dance being done, a banquet stands to bid you welcome. <laughs> oh, uh, how, how now, uh, Cheney, uh, is this banquet ready? There is no time, I fear, for banqueting. Huh? I fear your person is betrayed, my lord. The house is round beset by armed soldiers. <laughs> soldiers? Oh, my God. Oh, the commons are all up then. Oh, they will rebel against the king, I fear me, and flock to me to back their bold attempts. Oh, uh, go arm the household, Cheney. Uh, hear me, gentlemen. For God, I do not like this whispering. If your intents be honest, show your faces. Guards, fast the doors and seize him presently. This is the cave that keeps the tusked boar that roots up England's vineyards uncontrolled. Baggett, arrest him. If for help he cry, drown all his words with drums confusedly. Am I betrayed? You cannot escape, my lord. The toils are pitched, and all your household fast and hold. Hear this. Thomas of Woodstock, Duke of Gloucester, Earl of Cambridge, and of Buckingham. I here arrest thee in King Richard's name of treason to the crown, his state, and realm. I'll put in bail an answer to the law. Speak, is King Richard here? Uh, no. no. No, my, my lord. lord. Uh, away with Why him. Villains, touch me not. I am descended of the royal blood. King Richard's uncle, his grandsire's son, his princely father's brother. Becomes it princes to be led like slaves? Put on a vizard. Stop his cries. Ha! Who bids them so? I know that voice full well. Afore my God, false men, King Richard's here. Turn thee, thou headstrong youth, and speak again. By thy dead father's soul, I charge thee, hear me, so heaven may help me at my greatest need, as I have wished thy good and England's safety. You are still deceived, my lord. The king's not here. On with his masking suit, and bear him hence. We'll lead ye fairly to King Richard's presence. Nay, from his presence to my death you'll lead me, and I am pleased I shall not live to see my country's ruin and his misery. Thou hearst me well, proud king, and may well boast that thou betrayedst me here so suddenly. For had I known thy secret treachery, nor thou, nor these thy flattering minions with all your strengths had wronged plain Woodstock thus. But use your wills. Your uncle's gaunt and York will give you thanks for this, and the poor commons, when they shall hear of these, your unjust proceedings... Stop, they... mouth, I say! We'll hear no more! I'm good. Heaven forgive me, pray ye forbear a while. I'll speak one, one word more, indeed I will. Some man commend me to my virtuous wife. Tell her her dreams have ta'en effect indeed by wolves and lions now must Woodstock bleed. Deliver him to Le Poole. the ship lies ready. Convey him o'er to Calais speedily. There, use him as we gave directions. Sound up your drums, our hunting sports are done. And when you're past the house, cast by your habits and mount your horses with all swiftest haste. The boar is taken and our fears are past. Come, sirs, attend. My lord is coming forth. The high shreves of Canton Northumberland with 20 gentlemen are all arrested for privy whisperers against the state in which I know my lord will find some trick to seize their goods, and then there's work for us. Nay, there will be work for the hangman first. Then we rifle the goods, and my lord seizes the lands. 
if these 700 whisperers that are taken come off lustily, he'll have the devil in all shortly. See, see, they're coming. Mm. Call for a marshal there, commit the traitor. We do beseech your honor. Hear us speak. <laughs> sir, we'll not hear you. The proof's too plain against you. Becomes it you, sir, being Shreve of Kent, to stay the blanks King Richard sent abroad, revile our messengers, refuse the charters, and spurn like traitors against the king's decrees. My lord, I plead our ancient liberties, recorded and enrolled in the king's crown office, wherein the men of Kent are clear discharged of fines, fifteens, or any other taxes forever given them by the conqueror. You are still deceived. Those charters were not sent to abrogate your ancient privilege, but for his highness use they were devised to gather and collect amongst his subjects such sums of money as they well might spare, and he in their defence must hourly spend. Is not the subject's wealth at the king's will? What, is he lord of lives and not of lands? Is not his high displeasure present death, and dare ye stir his indignation so? We are freeborn, my lord, yet to do confess our lives and goods are at the king's dispose. But how, my lord? Like to a gentle prince to take or borrow what we best may spare, and not like bond slaves force it from our hands. Presumptuous traitors, that will we try on you. Will you set limits to the king's high pleasure? Hmm? Away to prison, seize their goods and lands. Much good may do ye, my lord. The care is ta'en, as good die there as here abroad be slain. Well, God forgive both you and us, my lord. Your hard oppressions have undone the state and made all England poor and desolate. Why suffer ye their speech to prison high? There let them perish, rot, consume and die. Ah, thou there, Nimble. I am here, my lord. And since your lordship is now employed to punish traitors, I am come to present myself unto you. What, for a traitor? No, my lord, but for a discoverer of the strangest traitor that was ever heard of. For, by plain arithmetic of my capacity, I have found out the very words a traitor spoke that has whistled treason. How is that, whistled treason? Not most certain, my lord. I have a trick for it. If a common do but whistle, I'll find treason in it, I warrant ye. <laughs> Thou art a rare statesman, Nimble. Thou hast a reaching hand. I'll put treason into any man's head, my lord. Let him answer it as he can. And then, my lord, we have got a schoolmaster that teaches all the country to sing treason. And like a villain, he says... God bless your lordship. Mm, thou art a most strange discoverer. Where are these traitors? All in prison, my lord. Mm. Master Ignorance, the Bailey of Dunstable, and I have taken great pains about them. Besides, here's a note of 700 whisperers. Most of them sleepy knaves we pulled out of Bedfordshire. Uh, let's see the note. 700 whispering traitors. <laughs> oh, monstrous villains. We must look to these. Of all the sort, these are the most dangerous, to stir rebellion against the king and us. What are they, Crosby? Are the rebels wealthy? Fat shops, my lord, all landed men, rich farmers, graziers and such fellows, that have been but a little pinched with imprisonment, begin already to offer their lands for liberty. Oh, will not be nice to take their offers, Crosby. Their lands are better than their lives to us. And without their lands, they shall not ransom lives. Go, sirs, to terrify the traitors more, ye shall have warrants straight to hang them all. Then if they if they proffer lands and put in bail to make a just surrender speedily, uh, let them have lives and after liberty. But those that have not lands nor goods to pay, let them be whipped, then hanged. Make haste, away. Well then... I see my whistler must be whipped. He has but two calves to live on and he has lost them too. And for my schoolmaster, oh, I'll have him march about the marketplace with 10 dozen of rods at his girdle the very day he goes a feasting. 
and every one of his scholars shall have a jerk at him. <laughs> Come, sirs. Away and leave us. Here comes Sir Edward Bagot. Quite happily met, my Lord Chasselier. You're well returned to court, Sir Edward, to this sad house of Sheen, uh, made comfortless by the sharp sickness of the good Queen Anne. King Richard <laughs> come and go on to visit her, sad for her weak estate. He sits and weeps, her speech is gone. Only at sight of him, she heaved her hands and closed her eyes again, and whether alive or dead, is yet uncertain. Here comes Sir William Bushy. <clears throat> what tidings, sir? The king's a widower, sir. Fair Anna Beam hath breathed her last farewell to all this realm. Peace with her soul, she was a virtuous lady. Uh, how takes King Richard this, her sudden death? Fares like a madman. Rends his princely hair, beats his sad breast, falls groveling on the earth, and careless of his state, wishing to die even in death to keep her company. But that which makes his soul more desperate, amidst the heat of passion, weeping comes his aunt, the Duchess, Woodstock's hapless wife, with tender love and comfort, at sight of whom his griefs again redoubled, calling to mind that lady's woeful state and yet all ignorant of her own mishap, he takes her in his arms, weeps on her breast, and would have there revealed her husband's fall amidst his passions, had not Scroop and Green, by violence, borne him to an inward room where he still cries to get a messenger to send to Calais to reprieve his uncle. I do not like those passions. If he reveal the plot, we all shall perish. Where's the Duchess? With much ado, we got her leave the presence with an intent to haste to ride to Plashy. Mm, she'll find sad comforts there. Would all were well, a thousand daggers round and close our state. We'll break through, my lord, in spite of fate. Come, come, be merry, good Tresillian. Here comes King Richard, I'll go comfort him. My dearest lord, forsake these sad laments. No sorrows can suffice to make her live. Then let sad sorrow kill King Richard too, for all earthly joys with her must die, and I am killed with cares eternally, for Anne Abim is dead, forever gone. She was too virtuous to remain with me, and heaven hath given her higher dignity. Oh, God, I fear even here begins our woe. Her death's but chorus to some tragic scene that shortly will confound our state and realm. Such sad events black mischief will attend and bloody acts, I fear, must crown the end. Presage not so, sweet prince. Your state is strong. Your youthful hopes with expectation crowned, let not one loss so many comforts drowned. Despair and madness seize me. Oh, my dear friends, what loss can be compared to such a queen? Down with this house of sheen. Go, ruin all. Pull down her buildings. Let her turrets fall forever, lay it waste and desolate. That English king may never here keep court but to all ages leave a sad report. When men shall see these ruined walls of sheen and sighing say, here died King Richard's queen, for which will have it wasted lime and stone to keep a monument of Richard's moan. Oh, torturing grief. Oh, dear my lord, all tears for her are vain oblations. Her quiet soul rests in celestial peace. With joy of that, let all your sorrows cease. Send post to Calais, and bid Le Poole forbear, on pain of life, to act our sad decree. For heaven's love, go, prevent the tragedy. We have too much provoked the powers divine, and here repent thy wrongs, good Uncle Woodstock. The thought whereof confounds my memory. 
if men might die when they would point the time, the time is now, King Richard would be gone. For as a fearful thunderclap doth strike the soundest body of the tallest oak, yet harmless leaves the outward bark untouched, so is King Richard struck. Come, come, let's go. My wounds are inward, inward burn my woe. Come, sirs, be resolute. The time serves well to act the business you have taken in hand. The Duke is gone to rest. Be fearless, bold, and win King Richard's love with heaps of gold. Are all your instruments for death made ready? All fit for the purpose. See, my lord, here's first the towel with which we do intend to strangle him. But if you strive, and this should chance to fail, I'll moor his old method with his hammer. Knock him down like an ox, and after cuts trot. How like is this? No, wound him not. It must be done so fair and cunningly, as if he died a common natural death. For so we must give out to all that ask. There is no way, then, but to smother him. I like that best. Yet, one thing, let me tell ye, think not your work contrived so easily as if you were to match some common man. Believe me, sirs, his countenance is such, so full of dread and lordly majesty, mixed with such mild and gentle haviour as will except you be resolved at full, strike you with fear, even with his princely looks. Not only looks as grim as Hercules, as stern and terrible as the devil himself. <laughs> well resolved. Retire yourselves a while, and uh, when occasion serves, I'll call you forth. Do but reckon with your finger, my lord, and like vultures we come flying and seize him presently. Do so. Now, oh, by my fairest hopes, I swear the boldness of these villains to this murder makes me abhor them and the deed forever. Horror of conscience with the king's command fights a fell combat in my fearful breast. The king commands his uncle here must die and... My sad conscience bids the contrary and tells me that his innocent blood thus spilt heaven will revenge. Murder's a heinous guilt, a seven times crying sin. A cursed man, the further that I wade in this foul act, my troubled senses are the more distract, confounded, and tormented past my reason. There's no lingering. Either he must die, or great King Richard vows my tragedy. Then, twixt two evils, tis good to choose the least. Let danger fright faint fools. I'll save mine own, and let him fall to black destruction. He sleeps <laughs> upon his bed. The time serves fitly. I'll call the murderers in. Some music there to rock his senses in eternal slumbers. Sleep, footstool, <laughs> sleep. Thou oh, nevermore shalt wake. This town of Calais shall forever tell within her castle walls, plain Thomas fell. Night horror and the eternal shrieks of death intended to be done this dismal night hath shook fair England's great cathedral and from my tomb elate at Canterbury the ghost of Edward the Black Prince is come to stay King Richard's rage my wanton son Thomas of Woodstock wake thy brother calls me thee thou royal issue of King Edward's loins it thou art beset with murder, rise and fly. If here thou stay, death comes and thou must die. Still dost thou sleep. Oh, I'm 
naught but air. Had I the vigor of my former strength when thou beheldst me fight at Cressy Field, where hand to hand I took King John of France and his bold sons, my captive prisoners, I'd shake these stiff supporters of thy bed and drag thee from this dull security. Oh, yet for pity, wake! Prevent thy doom. Thy blood upon my son will surely come, for which... Dear brother, Woodstock, haste and fly. Prevent his ruin and thy tragedy. Sleep so, so soundly and pour death so nigh. Thomas of Woodstock, wake my son and fly. Thy wrongs have roused thy rural father's ghost, and from his quiet grave, King Edward, come to guard thy innocent life. My princely son, behold me here, sometimes theft, yet being wrong, no one succeeded my kingly throne. Richard of Bordeaux, my accursed grandchild, cut off your titles to the kingly state. And now your lives and all would ruinate. Murders his grandsire's son, his father's brothers, becomes the landlord of my kingly titles, rents out my crown's vote revenues, racks my subjects that sent their bloods with me in conquering France. Beheld me ride in state through London streets and at my stirrup, lowly footing by. Four captive kings to grace my victory. Get that, not this, his riotous youth can stay, till death hath taken all his uncles away. Thou fifth of Edward's sons, get up and fly, haste thee to England, close and speed me. Thy brothers York and Gort are up in arms, go join with them, prevent by further harms. The murderers are at hand, awake my son, this hour foretells my sad destruction. Good angels, guide me thou. Stay, thou blessed spirit. Thy royal shadow of my kingly father, return again. I know thy reverend looks. Do thy dear sight once more recomfort me, put by the fears my trembling heart foretells, and here is made apparent to my sight by dreams and visions of this dreadful night. Upon my knees, I beg it. <laughs> Protect me, heaven. The doors are all made fast. Twas but my fancy. All's wished and still. And nothing here appears but the vast circuit of this empty room. Thou blessed hand of mercy, guide my senses afore, my God, methought, as here I slept, I did behold in lively form and substance my father Edward and my warlike brother, both gliding by my bed, and cried to me to leave this place and save my life and fly. Lighten my fears, dear Lord. I... Here remain a poor old man thrust from my native country, kept imprisoned in a foreign kingdom. If I must die, bear record, righteous heaven, how I have nightly waked for England's good and yet to right her wrongs and s would spend my blood. Send thy sad doom, King Richard, take my life. I wish my death might ease my country's grief. We are prevented. Retire by again. He's risen from his bed. What fate preserves him? My lord, how fare you? 
Thou canst not kill me, villain. God's holy angels guard a just man's life, and with his radiant beams as bright as fire will guard and keep his righteous innocence. I am a prince. Thou darest not murder me. Your grace mistakes, my lord. What art thou? Speak. La Poole, my lord, the city's governor. La Poole, thou art King Richard's flatterer. Oh, you just gods, <laughs> record their treachery. Judge their foul wrongs that under show of friendship betrayed my simple kind in tenderments. My heart misgave, it was no time for rebels. When you like maskers came disguised to Plashy, joined the wanton king to trap my life. For that I knows the end his malice aims at. This castle and my secret sending hither imports no less. Therefore, I charge ye tell me, even by the virtue of nobility, and partly too, on that allegiance thou owest the offspring of King Edward's house, if aught thou knows to prejudice my life, thou presently reveal and make it known. Nay, good my lord, forbear that fond suspicion. I tell thee, Paul, there is no less intended. <laughs> Why am I sent thus from my native country, but here at Calais to be murdered? And that Le Poole confounds my patience. This town of Calais, where I spent my blood to make it captive to the English king, before whose walls great Edward lay encamped with his seven sons almost for fourteen months, where the black prince, my brother, and my wife, the peers of England, and our royal father, fearless of wounds, ne'er left till it was won. And was to make a prison for his son. Oh, righteous heavens, why do you suffer it? Disquiet not your thoughts, my gracious lord. There is no hurt intended. Credit me. Although a while your freedom be abridged, I know the king. If you would but submit and write your letters to his majesty, your reconcilement might be easily wrought. For what should I submit or ask his mercy? Had I offended with all low submission, I'd lay my neck under the block before him and willingly endure the stroke of death. But if not so, why should my fond entreaties make my true loyalty appear like treason? No, no, Lepool, let guilty men beg pardons. My mind is clear, and I must tell ye, sir, Princes have hearts like pointed diamonds that will burst in sunder afore they bend. And such lives here, through death, though death, King Richard sends. Yet, fetch me pen and ink. I'll write to him, not to entreat, but to admonish him that he forsake his foolish ways in time and learn to govern like a virtuous prince. Call home his wise and reverent counsellors. Thrust from his court those cursed flatterers that hourly works the realm's confusion. This counsel, if he follow, may in time pull down those mischiefs that so fast do climb. Here's pen and paper, Lord. Will please you write. Anon, I will. Shut to the doors and leave me. Good night, Le Poole, and pardon me, I prithee, that my sad fear made question of thy faith. My state is fearful, and my mind was troubled even at thy entrance with most fearful visions, which made my passions more extreme and hasty. Out of my better judgments I repent it, and will reward thy life, thy love, once more. Good night. Good rest unto your grace. I mean in death, this dismal night thou breathest thy lightest breath. He sits to write. Call the murderers in to steal behind and closely strangle him. Oh, 
so help me heaven. I know not what to write, what style to use, nor how I should begin. My method is too plain to greet a king. I'll nothing say to excuse or clear myself. I have nothing done that needs excuse, but tell him plain. Though here I spend my blood, I wish his safety and all England's good. Crip close to his back, you rogue. Be ready with a towel when I have knocked him down to strangle him. Speak with me whilst his back is turned towards you, you damn villain. If thou lettest him speak but a word, we shall not kill him. I'll watch him for that. Down on your knees and creep, you rascal! Have God, mercy God, my, my sight suddenly fails me. I, I cannot see my paper. My trembling fingers will not hold my pen. A thick, constealed mist or spreads the chamber. I'll rise and view the room. Oh, not till fast, but failing. <laughs> what villain hand have done a deed so bad to drench his black soul in a prince's blood? You great, sir? Take that! Uh, and that! Oh, soon put the towel about his throat and strangle him quickly, you slave! Or oh, by the heart of hell, I'll fell thee too! Oh, tis done! You damn slave! Oh, oh, oh Paul! You dog, Paul! Oh, damn, pull myself to hell in doing it! Oh, oh, oh. But now I've killed the truest subject that ever breathed in England! Oh, oh wrong, Paul! Oh. Think on the gold we'll have for doing it, oh, and now let him, and then oh, then go to the devil together. Bring him in the feather bed and roll him in, that he will be scattered and stifled, and life and soul pressed out together. Quickly, you whole hound! Oh, here, here, you cannibal! Don't, oh, oh, he kicks and sprawls. Oh, lie on his breast, you villain! Oh. Let him sprawl and hang. He's sure enough for speaking. Pull off the bed now. Smooth down his hair and beard. Close his eyes and set his neck right. Why so? Why, all fine and cleanly. Who can say that this man was murdered now? Why, well, is he dead? There's a doornail, my lord. What will you do with his body? Take it up gently, lay him in his bed, and shut the door as if he there had died. It cannot be by perceived otherwise, my lord. Never was murder done with such rare skill. At our return, we shall expect reward, my lord. Tis ready told. Bear in the body, then return and take it. Within there! Ho! My lord? Be ready with your weapons. Guard the room. There's two false traitors entered the duke's chamber, plotting to bear him thence, betray the castle, deliver up the town and all our lives to the French forces that are hard at hand to second their attempts. Therefore stand close and if they enter, seize them presently. Our will's your warrant. Use no further words, but hew them straight to pieces with your swords. I warn ye, my lord, and their skins were scaled with brass. We have swords will pierce them. Come, sirs, be ready. Can you mention, rascal, the deed's done and all things performed rarely. We'll take our reward, still close out of the town, buy us fresh geldings, spur cut and ride till we are past all danger, I warrant thee. You have the reward there. Quick, I say. Down with the traitors! Kill the villains! Hell of the devil! Zoom, zoom! Oh. <coughs> Drag hence their bodies. Throw them in the sea. The black reward of deaths a traitor's pay. So, this was well performed. Now, who but we can make report of Woodstock's tragedy? 
only he died a natural death at Calais. So must we give it out, or else King Richard through Europe's kingdoms will be hardly censured. His headstrong uncles, York and Lancaster, are up, we hear, in open arms against him. The gentlemen and commons of the realm missing the good old duke, their plain protector, break their allegiance to their sovereign lord and all revolt upon the barren sides, to help which harm all over to England straight. And with the old troops of soldiers taken from Calais, I'll back King Richard's power. Or should he fail and his great uncles get the victory, his friends are sure to die. But if he win, they fall. And we shall rise while Richard's king. These proclamations we have sent abroad wherein we have accused the dukes of treason will dent their pride and make the people leave them. I hope so, at least. Where art thou nimble? So ah. loaded with armour I cannot stir, my lord. Uh, whose drums are those that beat him in now? Uh, King Richard's drums, my lord. The young lords are pressing soldiers. Ah, oh, and uh, do they take their press with willingness? as willing as a punk that's pressed as a feather bed. Uh, they take their pressing a piece with great patience. Marry, the lords no sooner turn their backs, but they run away like sheep, sir. Uh, <laughs> they shall be hanged like dogs for it. What, does the slave refuse their sovereign? They say the proclamation's false, my lord, and they'll not fight against the king's friends. <sighs> so I feared as much. And since it has come to this, I must provide be time and seek for safety, for now the king and our audacious peers are grown to such height of burning rage as nothing now can quench their kindled ire, but open trial by sword and lance. And then I fear the king will, King Richard's part will fail. Nimble, our soldiers run, thou sayest. Aye, by my troth, my lord. And I think tis our best course to run after them. For if they run now, what will they do when the battle begins? Uh, if we tarry here and the king's uncles catch us, we are sure to be hanged, my lord. Have you no trick of law to defend us? No demure or writ of error to remove us? Nimble, we must be wise. Then let's not stay to have more wit beaten into our heads. I like not that, my lord. I am a man of peace and not for war. And yet they say you do have made more wrangling in the land than all the wars have done this seven years. This battle will revenge their base exclaims, but hearst thou nimble, I'll not be there today. One man among so many is no maim, therefore I'll keep aloof till all be done. If good, I stay. If bad, away I run. Nimble it shall be so. I'll neither fight nor die, but this resolved, disguise myself and fly. Tis the wisest course, my lord. Oof. Then I'll go put off mine armour that I may run lustily too. Go to our tents, dear sister. Cease your sorrows. We will revenge our noble brother's wrongs and force that wanton tyrant to reveal the death of his dear uncle. Harmless Woodstock, so traitorously betrayed. Alack, good man, it was an easy task to work on him. His plainness was too open to their view. He feared no wrong because his heart was true. Good sister, cease your weeping. There's none here, but are as full of woe and touched as near. Conduct and charge guard her, Cheney, to the tent. Expect to hear severest punishment on all their heads that have procured his harms, struck for the terror of our threatening arms. May all the powers of heaven assist your hands and may their sins with sit heavy on their souls that they in death this day may perish all that traitorously conspired good Woodstock's fall. If he be dead, by good King Edward's soul, we'll call King Richard to a strict account 
for that and for his realm's misgovernment. You peers of England, raised in righteous arms, here to re-edify our country's ruin, join all your hearts and hands never to cease, till with our swords we work fair England's peace. Most princely Lancaster, our lands and lives are to these just proceedings ever vowed. Those flattering minions that overturn the state, this day in death shall meet their endless fate. Never such vipers were endured so long to gripe and eat the carts of all the kingdom. This day shall here determinate all wrongs. The meanest man taxed by their foul oppression shall be permitted freely to accuse, and right they shall have to regain their one, or all shall sink in dark confusion. How now? What drums are these? To arms, my lord. The minions of the king are swiftly marching on to give ye battle. They march to death then, Cheney. Dare the traitors presume to brave the field with English princes. Where is King Richard? He was resolved but lately to take some hold of strength and so secure him. Uh, knowing their states were all so desperate, it seems they have persuaded otherwise, for now he comes with full resolve to fight. La Poule this morning is arrived at court with the Calais soldiers and some French supplies to back this now intended enterprise. Those new supplies have spurred their forward hopes and thrust their resolutions boldly on to meet with death and sad destruction. The drums are near, just heaven. Direct this deed, and as our cause deserves, our fortune's speed. Although we could have easily surprised, dispersed, and overthrown your rebel troops, that draw your swords against our sacred person, the highest God's anointed deputy, breaking your holy oaths to heaven and us. Yet of our mild and princely clemency, we have forborne that by this parliament, we might be made partaker of the cause that moved ye rise in this rebellious sort. Hast thou, King Richard, made us infamous by proclamations false and impudent? Hast thou condemned us in our absence too as most notorious traitors to the crown? Betrayed our brother Woodstock's harmless life and sought base means to put us all to death. And dost thou now plead dotish ignorance why we are landed thus in our defense? Methinks your treasons to his majesty, raising his subjects against his royal life, should make ye beg for mercy at his feet. You have forgotten, Uncle Lancaster, how you, in prison, murdered cruelty, cruelly, a friar Caramelite, because he was to bring in evidence against your grace of most ungracious deeds and practices. And you, my lord, remember not so well that by that Caramelite at London once, when at supper, you have poisoned us. For shame, King Richard, leave this company that like dark clouds obscure the sparkling stars of thy great birth and true nobility. Yield to your uncles. <coughs> Who but they should have the guidance of your sacred state and counsel. Yield first your heads, and so he shall be sure to keep his person and his state secure. And by my crown, if still you thus persist, your heads and hearts ere long shall answer it. Not till you send for more supplies from France, for England will not yield ye strength to do it. Thou well mayst doubt their loves that lost their hearts, 
ungracious prince, cannot thy native country find men to back this desperate enterprise? His native country? Why, that's France, my lord. At Bordeaux was he born, which place allures and ties his deep affections still to France. Richard is English blood, not English born. Thy mother travelled in unhappy hours when she at Bordeaux left her heavy load. The soil is fat for wines, not fit for men. And England now laments that heavy time. Her royalties are lost, her state made base. And thou no king, but landlord now become to this great state that terrored Christendom. I cannot brook these braves. Let drums sound death and strike at once to stop this traitor's breath. Nay, hey, my dear Lord, and once more hear me, princes. The king was minded ere this brawl began to come to terms of composition. Let him revoke the proclamations, clear us of all supposed crimes of treason, Reveal where our good brother Gloucester keeps, and grant that these pernicious flatterers may by the law be tried, to quit themselves of all such heinous crimes alleged against them, and we'll lay down our weapons at thy feet. Presumptuous. Presumptuous traitors. Traitors. Again. We double it, rebellious traitors. Traitors to heaven and to us. Draw all your swords and fling defiance to these traitorous lords. Let drums be thunder and begin the fight. Just let heaven protect us and protect the lives. lives. Stand for thou canst not scape my sword. What villain fronts me with the name of traitor? Was thou false Cheney? Now by King Richard's love, I'll tilt thy soul out for that base reproach. I would thy master and the late protector with both his treacherous brothers, Gaunt and York, were all opposed with thee to try these arms. I'd seal it on all your hearts. This shall suffice to free the kingdom from thy villainies. Thou hunt a noble game, right warlike Cheney. Cut but this visor off, thou heal'st the kingdom. Yield thee, false traitor, most detested man, that set his King Richard against his reverend uncles to shed the royal bloods and make the realm weep for their timeless desolation. Cast down thy weapons, for by this my sword will bear thee from this place, alive or dead. Come both then, I'll stand firm and dare your worst. He that flies from it, be his soul accursed. <clears throat> so may the foes of England fall in blood, most dissolute traitor. Up with his body, Cheney and hail it to the tent of Lancaster. Stand firm, my lord, here is rescue. Courage then, we'll bear his body up, hence in spite of them. Oh, princely youth, King Richard's dearest friend, what heavenly star this day had dominance to cut off all thy flowering youthful hopes? Prosper, proud rebels, as you dealt by him, hard-hearted uncles, unrelating churls, that here have murdered all my earthly joys. Oh, my dear Green, wert thou alive to see how I'll revenge thy timeless tragedy on all their heads that did but lift a hand to hurt this body that I held so dear, even by this kiss, and by my crown, I swear. Away, my lord, stand not to wail his death, 
The field is lost. Our soldiers shrink and fly. The pool is taken prisoner by the lords. Hide thee to the tower. There's no help in swords. Still to continue war, where childishness their odds a mountain, ours a molehill is. Let us fly to London and make strong the tower. Loud proclamations post throughout the camp with promise of reward to all that take us. Yet safety of our lives, my princely lord, if we stay here, we shall, we shall be all betrayed. Oh, my dear friends, the fearful wrath of heaven sits heavy on our heads for Woodstock's death. Blood cries for blood. And that almighty hand permits not murder unrevenged to stand. Come, come, we yet may hide ourselves from worldly strength, but heaven will find us out and strike at length. Each lend a hand to bear this load of woe that erst King Richard loved and tendered so. We're all down nimble. <gasps> Here's the feather, my lord. Oh, I have put off my shoe that I might run lustily. Oh, the battle's lost and they're all prisoners. What should we do, my lord? Oh, oh yonder's the ditch. We may run along that and be ne'er seen, I warrant. I did suspect no less. And so tis fallen, and the day is lost, and dashed are all our hopes. King Richard's taken prisoner by the peers. Oh, that I were upon some steepy rock where I might tumble headlong to the sea before these cruel lords do seize on me. Oh, that I were transformed into a mouse, that I might creep into any hole in the house, and I cared not. Come, Nimble, tis no time to use delay. I'll keep me in this poor disguise a while, and so unknown prolong my weary life in hope King Richard shall conclude my peace. Ah, mm. oh, cock! The trumpets call the soldiers back. Retreat has sounded, now the time serves fit and we may steal from hence. Away, good nimble. Nay, stay, my lord. Slid and you go that way, farewell. But, and you'll be ruled by me, I have thought of a trick that ye shall escape them all most bravely. Bethink thyself, good nimble, quickly, man. I'll, I'll meditate, my lord, and then I'm for ye. Show thyself a man of valour. Think of thy fortunes. Tis a hanging matter if thou conceal him. Besides, there's a thousand marks for him that takes him with the Duke's favours and free pardon. Besides, he's but a coward. He would ne'er run from the battle else. Saint Anthony, assist me. I'll set upon him presently. Uh, my lord, I have thought upon this trick. I must take you prisoner. How prisoner? <laughs> There's one way to escape else. Then I must carry you to the king's uncle, who presently condemns you for a traitor, sends you away to hanging, and then, God bless my lord Tresillian. Will thou betray thy master, villain? Aye, if my master be a villain. You think tis nothing for a man to be hanged for his master. Ha! Oh. You hear not the proclamation? What proclamation? Oh, sir, all the country is full of them. That whosoever sees you does not presently take ye and bring you to the laws shall be hanged for his labour. Therefore no more words, lest I raise up the whole camp upon ye. You see, one of your own swords of justice drawn over ye. Therefore go quietly, lest I cut off your head and save the hangman the labour. Oh, villain! No, no more words. <laughs> Away, sir! Thus, princely Edward's sons, in tender care of wanton Richard and their father's realm, have toiled to purge fair England's pleasant field of all these rancorous weeds that choked the grounds and left her pleasant meads like barren hills. Who is to can tell us which way Bagot fled? Some say to Bristol to make strong the castle. See that the ports be laid, he'll fly the land, for England hath no hold can keep him from us. 
Had we Tresillian hanged, then all was sure. Where slept our scout that he escaped the field? He fled, they say, before the fight began. Mm. Our proclamation soon, soon shall find him forth, the root and ground of all these vile abuses. <laughs> oh, now? What guard is that? What traitor's there? The traitor now is Tain. I here present the villain. And if he needs, we'll know his name. God bless my Lord Tresillian. Tresillian, my Lord, attached and apprehended by his man. Yes, and it please ye, my Lord. T'was I that took him. I was once a trampler in the law after him, and I thank him he taught me this trick to save myself from hanging. Thou art a good lawyer and hast removed the cause from thyself fairly. I have removed it with a habeas corpus, and then I took him with a sushari and bound him in this bond to answer it. Nay, I have studied for my learning. I can tell ye, my lord, there was not a stone between Men Westminster Hall and Temple Bar, but I have told them every morning. What moved thee, being his man, to apprehend him? Partly for these causes. First, the fear of proclamation. For I have plodded in Plowden and confined. And yes, that didn't go horribly, horribly wrong. That was deliberate because we don't have the end of the play. <laughs> Sadly, uh, the uh, the last page or so has been lost. So we don't know precisely how it ends. So we thought we'd uh, we'd cut out our feed and go silent and 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 vaguely show King Richard coming back on and being <laughs> repentant -y in some fashion um, and some sort of status quo established. Um, but who knows? Who knows what the ending could be? Uh, it's one of the questions for the future as to uh, what ending. Uh, I've already had the submission of one ending uh, privately and uh, alternative ending. So uh, thoughts on that um, uh, to come up. Well done, everyone. That was good fun. From, I, 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 had fun, I say I had fun dying. Um, I, I, I did have a slight problem of having to be slightly more emphatic with most of my final speeches because my dog was barking in the background. So I thought I'd just try and drown that out. So I was I was planning to be a little more low key, but it was more no. I'm just going to keep the volume up about there and let's hope for the best. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. The prison may have had a dog in the background, but you know uh, what can you do? Uh, so for, especially for those who've been here for the whole uh, journey, they even uh, or or in and out. Um, uh, it's it's been really interesting getting a sense of the progression and the flow. Either, okay, it's not been a complete flow, but I think frankly, if we tried to do this all in one go, we some of us may may have expired on the journey. Um, <laughs> I mean, uh, it was it was hard enough just doing that bit with Woodstock, frankly, and I wasn't in Act Five. Um, <laughs> Um, so yeah, thoughts from the room about progression of characters, the flow of the play, things that anyone wants to the throw up. Um, we did in deliberately make sure that the, for example, Woodstock's death was incredibly long, and I think that worked. Um, yes, it was. It was quite horrible, and and I think the excessiveness of that of that it just it just doesn't stop. Uh, and they're still talking about it. Um, it's absolutely fascinating. Uh, Lynn. 
Yeah, what I was going to say is I thought that whole sequence of scenes went really well. I was I, I, I was quite impressed considering that it was it was kind of Im improvised. So like um, Lapool's conversation with Woodstock before the murders come in and with the all that whole sequence I thought was very creepy and disturbing and effective. So kudos, you guys. I had no idea Lapool was so frightfully awful. It was <laughs> wonderful. Enjoying it far too much, Aliki. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. He isn't quite written that way, but I couldn't resist playing against the text. <laughs> God, it was good. Um, yeah. Not, not the only person to get a on stage death. Uh, we also saw the end of Green uh, and the end of uh, uh, that, that this sort of sad moment there did, did, did we feel for green how did we no not in the least <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to get london <laughs> i love the adam and green though that's lovely <laughs> the um i gotta speak up for green actually because i think the playwright whomever that may be is 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 uh, is also became while writing him probably a bit enamored of the character because that is a badass death scene if it, if if they wanted to to diminish Green, they would have him slain in single combat with a nobody like Cheney. No offense, Cheney, um, but but no, uh, it takes two of them to kill him, and and I think that garners some audience sympathy because two against one is clean against the law of arms. Uh, so you know, um, I'm. I, I don't feel like I did green justice, but I loved playing him and and you know, he he dies like a stone cold badass. And and he's mourned. And he's mourned. Uh, you know, and I think that's actually more, almost more important is that we, we have this moment of actual uh, sadness for, for his passing. Lois then Eric. I really just wanted to ask whether that stage direction that has a green killed by two people is the original one or whether uh, somebody's put that in. It seems to me just unlikely. I mean, of course, my opinion of Cheney is very high and I just don't believe that he would have uh, uh, had somebody else help him kill anybody. So uh, is that an original direction? Um, it, it, it is not necessarily an original direction, yeah. Mm -hmm. There is no direction actually for Green dying. There, there is no di direction at all um, mm. that ha as to how he dies. Yeah. Um, but he, it, to be fair, Green does invite it. Come both then. So if Green mm. dies by, by being attacked by two people, it, it's basically like sat standing on the side of a swimming pool saying, go on, push me in. And when somebody does, you can't complain. Mm. Um, so, you know. Per perhaps that actor was the was the really good stage combatant or the fight director in the company. Maybe they they had that scene as a showcase for them. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Uh, how was how was King Richard R Richard number three? Or uh, even though you're Richard two, but it's the third third Richard of the week. Um, how did you find Richard's journey this week? Oh, sorry, I was going to go to Eric, but I'll come back to Eric in a moment, and then I'll go to Elizabeth Foss. I'll go to Richard first because I said I was going to Richard. So Richard, how was how how did you find Richard's journey across just this section? Just this, I mean, it's fun, isn't it? You get to have your crazy. Oh, my wife is dead. Everything is awful, and then I'm going to go out and kill my uncles and the regret at deciding to kill um, Woodstock, and so it's it's a fun journey I think obviously I was here for the first reads of this play but I haven't seen the rest of this week so I don't know how the others would have felt about it but um I I had fun today <laughs> yeah it's it is such a range of, of of things going on and you know is it buyer's remorse or is it just fe he's feeling you know does he really feel or is it is it does he feel remorse because he's genuinely feels remorse or does he feel remorse because he's feeling like maybe I'm getting caught by you know this all the you know things coming to roost there yeah or is it that you know he's realizing how good a person that his wife actually was and so maybe he should live a bit more like her than in the way that he has been and so this is one thing he could do to you know as a make it up to her kind of thing even though she's dead i don't know he loses both his wife and uh, and uh, green as well i mean there's um it's it's there's, there's a lot of a lot of stuff for that uh eric then elizabeth 
I was going to say something about Green, but now I, I want to talk about Richard. So now I'm, I'm, I just didn't expect like Pamela's sort of cry, wailing cry of like, you know, w- w- as soon as we entered. So I, I just like, I, <laughs> I just kind of tried not to start laughing halfway through, um, you know, it's okay, it's okay. And then like, <laughs> yeah, no. Um, but um, yeah, no, that was very well done. Um, but yeah, about Green, I, I feel like maybe they just, maybe his death scene would be one of those sort of film type um, attack one at a time things, <laughs> which is very, very annoying because you know that people do not attack one at a time. Uh, if he's beset by sort of, you know, people. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it just, uh, if I feel like, you know, one way of doing it would be that, but that would sort of diminish him as well. Well, it's also, you know, it should come as something a surprise to the audience because Green doesn't die. Um, here yeah, he doesn't. This this is completely, you know. So maybe the audience is it's an intended thing. Ah, oh, Green's going to escape. He's going to win. He dies. What? <laughs> Hang on, uh, Elizabeth. Yeah. Oh my God. I wanted to say your death scene was so good. It's like the best thing I've ever seen. You had both. So it was the same with Alexandra. I think Valentina. the killers. And they were, they were such good um, synchronicity, the way they killed you. And your hand reaching up to the screen and then doing your death throw is just fantastic. I, I, I like organising the odd death. It's, uh, it's so much. It's so satisfying. Um, <laughs> Huzzah for violence! Yeah. But, uh, well, control, controlled, fiction, fictionalised, and 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 within logical context. Um, you know, you don't get to do it at home. That's the thing. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, other thoughts. Um, uh, oh, Eric, back again. Uh, yeah, I, I was just because I hadn't read ahead as I should have done. But anyway, I was quite entertained by um, how the murderers uh, sort of complain about how heavy <laughs> Woodstock is and, you know, sort of, sort of start this random rant about killing people and like, oh, yeah, you should do it like this. Oh, no. But if you don't do it, I'll kill you. And then like sort of it's very sort of vice in a morality play kind of almost. Um, I want to bring us around to um, Tresillian's uh, comeuppance and Nimble's lack of comeuppance. Uh, now, I, I seem to recall yesterday, uh, uh, Sarah was leading the charge of going, God, mm. oh, isn't Nimble horrible? But just the question here, were we, were we, uh, were, who, were we rooting for Nimble when, uh, when Nimble uh, uh, dobs Tresillian in it? Um, and do we want Nimble to also get dobbed in it next? Because, of course, we don't know what happens. Does Nimble get away with it? Um, so here's the question for the room. Should Nimble get away with it? Uh, Lynn? I, I, I kind of envision the, the missing end of the play having the, the uh, uh, vanquishing uncle say, oh, thank you so much for bringing Tresillian to justice and now we're going to hang you. Mm. Uh, I, I seem to remember another play from this era where something like that happens, where the... the <clears throat> The stool pigeon says, don't I get rewarded for uh, turning in my boss or somebody else? And, and uh, the, the authorities say, no. I mean, uh, Revenger's tragedy ends a little bit like that, where the, the Bendice can't help saying, I engineered this all. And the, the new Duke says, oh, did you really? Off to execution with you. So it, so, so I kind of imagine that Nimble gets it in the neck in the end. We've also had uh, instances where people who uh, dobbed up their, their co-conspirator in it uh, actually lead the execution uh, themselves. So that might be uh, a possibility too. I saw Liza and then Aliki. Yeah, that would absolutely work. I, you know, Nimble saying, oh, so can I have my thousand crowns then? And, and you know, Cheney or whomever saying, uh, it's right this way on the other side of this rope and a nimble go a, a nimble like last witticism before death. <laughs> mm. uh, Aliki. I sort of feel like that joke has just been done with uh, Woodstock's murderers, so it wouldn't work quite as well. Um, and I have to say, I really enjoyed Nimble. I enjoyed Tresillian's comeuppance. I liked that he was hoist by his own petard. And I liked that... Um, you see so much, you know, of the wars of the aristocrats in which the peasants die. 
So it's quite nice to have a peasant do away with an aristocrat. And I was kind of rooting for him. Sure, he's awful, but almost everybody is. <laughs> mm, uh, Helen. Yeah, I, I mean, as the person who ordered Tresillian hanged, even if only muted, um, Lancaster was very keen on getting hold of Tresillian, who he blamed for 90% of what had been going on. Um, and he seemed to me to be quite amused by Nimble. And I felt very much that Nimble may not have got the reward, but he got his life. Mm. And it's a question if, if we do consider him, say, a clown figure, it isn't often that you kill the clown. You sometimes kill the clown. We've got at least one instance where the clown, clown gets hanged at the end, but uh, you don't often kill the clown. Um, mm. So if we consider him as being that extreme as a, as a comedy character, um, which I'm not so sure uh, myself. Um, Sarah? I, I think he probably does get away. And I really, I could totally see him hanging Tresillian. I mean, I, that, you know, I can actually see him volunteering for the role. Um, and I think it's really easy to root for him just because Tresillian is such an ass. Um, and, and because they did start off as equals and I mean, he's an underdog and everybody always roots for the underdog. However, in spite of all that, I, I still find him really repellent just because of all those people that he sends to their, their deaths. And not only does he send, send them to their deaths, but he, he savours sending them to their deaths. He really relishes it. And I think the fact that we've done the play over three days, maybe today, you know, that was a little bit more distant, but yesterday he was just doing the most horrendous things and sending people to the most terrible deaths and really enjoying it. So I kind of feel he should get his comeuppance, but I have a feeling he probably doesn't. <laughs> yeah, I have to say that that's where I'm landing is that actually, yeah, we should lean on those uh, ambiguities, as it were, or, or ironies of, 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 of the world of uh, 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 that might be something fun to play with. It's really interesting. It might be one to try out with audiences and in preview and just go, uh, do, do, do they do they really want him to stay alive? Or, and does that create too much of a downer for the end of the evening? Uh, Lynn, then Lois. Yeah, just to add a little bit to what Sarah just said. Yeah, not only does he line up all these people, what, 700 of them for execution for treason and kind of is enjoying that. It, it, the implication is that they're probably basically innocent as well. They're, they're just grumbling a little bit and, uh, and, and they're going to be hanged. So yeah, he's getting these people executed. He's kind of enjoying it and they're probably not even guilty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, uh, Lois. Yeah, I think it depends really what kind of play you think it is, because uh, uh, I mean, generally, if you want a moral ending, you've really got to show that servants who betray their masters are about the lowest form of life, and they, they certainly have to be punished. Uh, on the other hand, if you're thinking of it as more of a comedy, or at least that part of the play is uh, kind of a throwback to vice comedy almost, uh, then he could easily get away and end up hanging Tresillian. I mean, it's really quite fascinating. I think very interesting play. The the way that both uh, Woodstock and Richard are given quite a bit of interiority and other people from time to time. And, uh, uh, and I, I think myself that the author has tried to kind of prepare the ground for some kind of reformation in Richard. I mean, he, he keeps making him say things that suggest that he knows he's doing the wrong thing, you know, as if he was trying to make it possible to have a scene later where, where he starts to behave properly. I don't know. Um, uh, Eric. I was going to say that maybe like it's kind of that thing from like, I think it was the Jew of Malta that we did, where um, they mentioned that, you know, a traitor is just going to do one thing. Uh, he's going to betray you. So like, that's the only thing that you can be sure of. So maybe that would be kind of the, the way to approach Nimble as a sort of, you know, as, as soon as he flips, he kind of um, becomes a person who is dangerous to the state. Yeah. Um, so the other, of course, uh, question about how we end it is, of course, precisely how we uh, reconcile the various sides uh, after this this battle. Um, uh, I'm assuming it depends. Of course, we could just completely ignore history. Um, I mean, the play does quite a lot of that. Um, 
so uh, that question of you know do we bring we in our muted version brought richard on and there was some sort of you know question of uh, where we go from here um and it's it's an interesting question do do we bring richard back on how do we end the play how do we give it its, its final moments obviously we might have to write some additional material i have some thoughts about where some alternative material could come from um uh but um yeah uh, thoughts about how what's the most satisfying way to to end this do we lean into the fact that we don't like we did today to the fact we don't know how it ends or what do we commission if we commission um uh thoughts anybody how do you feel the play should end helen <laughs> Well, pretty much as we ended it, but fast, I think, is important. There's no point in trying to write half a scene. Mm. I, I think we really need to get through it with as few extra words as possible. We, we've just got to decide, I mean, what the relationship is between um, Richard and Lancaster. And... Uh, what happens to the other para uh, the other caterpillars? Uh, Lynn? Yeah, I don't know that satisfying is even the word we're going for. Um, this play is a little bit all over the place in terms of tone and genre and, and all of that. So I'm wondering if maybe an ambiguous ending might actually be the one one would want to go for. We don't know what happens to the caterpillars. We don't know what happens to nimble. We don't know uh, what exactly the king's new relationship with his uncles is. I, I mean, I suppose we could ignore history, but you know, the, the historical fact is that uh, the, the uh, deposition of the king and, and the usurping of the crown, it doesn't happen quite yet. And this, the next king of England, Henry IV, isn't even in this play. So I don't know, maybe leaving it up in the air might be a choice. Hmm. I was just uh, slightly odd in terms of the play being uh, uh, all over the place in terms of tone and, and, and genre. It seems actually very consistent as a drama um, hmm. throughout. It, it, um, it does, it, it, but that's one of the things that's so great about it is that it shifts from this dark, icky murder scene to this kind of uh, sort of more comic scene with Tresillian and, and Nimble. I mean, in a dark comedy way but uh, you know it does it 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 does a lot of different things but somehow manages to suture them together surprisingly seamlessly that's my experience of it mm. well the Tresillian and nimble scene that, that follows there is, is mostly an exposition scene i mean that's what's interesting you know it's 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 an exposition at run while running um uh, you know it, uh, it's it, what i find interesting structurally is actually how many of these scenes are really big the big scenes yeah. there's very few small linky scenes like that that's actually one of the few scenes where it's just we're running on oh we got some of those things uh, everything's going down um uh, kind of action uh it's um yeah uh, i see lots of hands i'm gonna stop talking i'll go to sarah then alan then lois i personally feel you could end it um in in some way some version of what we did today I, I thought that worked really well but if you wanted to put an ending to it uh and not necessarily one that tidied up all the loose ends because you don't want it too neat but if you wanted some sort of closure I would really love it to be a, a, a monologue a soliloquy from the Duchess of Gloucester because I just thought I, I love the way Alexandra played her today I, I just thought that was beautiful and you know, she's she's just damn right, isn't she? Everything that she that she thinks um, is going to happen happens. And uh, we, there aren't that many women in this play, but the ones that there are are just really sane and sensible. So I think it would be great to have her come on and do some sort of interior monologue where it's more about her feelings than about what's happened, than about this is what's happened. But nevertheless, we kind of find out a little bit of what's happened just through, you know, her processing it all um, and, and sharing that with the audience. So I think that could be, that could be one way to do it. But I mean, just ending it the way we did, I, I thought that worked really well too. Uh, Alan? I think what we did probably worked quite well with Zoom. I think in a live performance, my 
gut feeling would be to get to where there's the dot 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 at the end of um, nimble speech and snap black out and just leave it hanging I, th I think it's a very weird way to end a theater show unless you've queued everybody in that it's a fragmentary play in advance if you if people have been here for three hours which they pretty inevitably will do we, I, I i feel we have to give them an ending i think that that that's a way to really piss off everyone uh, and I only like pissing off audiences if I really have got a reason for doing it. Um, um, but we could. Hey. <laughs> uh, confused curtain call uh, bowing. Um, muted applause. Uh, Lois. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure if I can even say this, but the, the most obvious way to sell this play to an audience. I, I think you can just stop that. I know exactly where you're going. Uh, okay. We'll right. discuss this in just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Right. laughs> um, yeah, there, 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 there is, a, there is an alternative which uh, break, breaks house rules. Um, any yes. other thoughts about uh, the ending? Because um, it is that thing we kind of want to be able to put some words into Richard's mouth. It is easy enough to put words into Lancaster's mouth because actually, the kind of things that Lancaster would have to say to vaguely give the kingdom back to Richard. Um, is is in what Woodstock says earlier. Woodstock says the same thing several times in the text, so it wouldn't be too difficult to remove some Woodstock and with some adjustments put them into uh, Lancaster's mouth. Um, I think Richard is the problem. What does Richard say? Does Richard say anything? Do we use music and do it all in mime? Uh, Alexandra. Um, I support Helen's idea that it shouldn't take more than a page of text. Yeah. Um, because that's presumably what's missing. And also, I think it's regarding your point about Richard, um, I think it's very interesting and much more dramatic if whatever happens to the other people, um, Richard obviously can't be deposed, can't be punished in any way. So he's being punished by the suffering of the people around him um, and by the taking away of power. So the, the idea that he started off um, struggling to gain some power and some control in his own life, got it, misused it, and then lost it again, um, I think would be very powerful. The fact that now in, the, in this last scene, he's sort of told, you're on, a le you're on a much tighter leash now. The end. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like we need a sort of cer official ceremony where he is or has all his lovely clothes taken off him and all, uh, everyone has to... Trapes through the stage in uh, you know sackcloth cloth and ashes and then he is given the crown back um so he still had you know that there's something like that where we don't use dialogue because i think the problem with if we start inventing dialogue it's just gonna clash in this awkward <laughs> yee way um alexandra again Sorry, there was a thing I was going to say a minute ago and I, I missed it. Um, I had an idea also about the not inventing dialogue. So one thing you can do is obviously steal from other plays with this theme, but you could steal from other plays that don't have this these characters. They have the theme. So, you know, grab a bit of peel, grab a bit of green or something and just append to that with, with name changes. All you'd need is one speech. Mm. Um, excellent. Uh any other thoughts about just this this quarter of a uh, quarter a third of the play um uh, anything about the characters um or continuation on that 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 final uh, question of how to end the play uh, or for that matter everyone who's been here for the whole week uh it's been almost a whole week on thomas of woodstock um any thoughts about the 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 fl i mean it's a shame we can't yeah, say we can't do it all in one go uh yet um but um yeah uh, fi any final thoughts lois yeah, I, I feel in a way, in a play that is about Woodstock, it might be rather nice if there were something at the end where people said, you know, that, uh, you know, he was a great guy and so on, as everybody is saying, but, you know, was this the right sort of person for these times or, you know, something, something brief even just to, um, just to kind of bring out this whole thing of what do you do if you don't like the way your country is going and uh, uh, are there better ways of, uh, uh, of dealing with this fact. I don't know, just, you know, can you have too much integrity of the wrong kind or just some some brief thing? It could be about two lines even. Mm. Give me a funeral. 
bring bring me body <laughs> on. Yeah. Make him feel real. You know, rub Richard's nose in my 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 yeah. cold corpse. Yeah. Uh, yes. Actually, that's a that's a very good idea. Bring on the court the, the the funeral cortege and have the everybody else following it in in proper proper order um uh, with richard pushed into his proper with into his place and his uncles following swiftly on his heels making sure he doesn't get out of line mm. uh, oh work it, it, except that he's only got one surviving uncle at that point. <laughs> he's got two. York? No, York. York's, York's died. No. 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 Yes. He just wasn't yes. On. In one of the one of the stage directions we cut. No. Oh. no. Just beats them all the way. Exuant fighting. No. There's no. But that that no he death. doesn't he doesn't appear thereafter. No, but he's not he's not dead. He's not dead. He's definitely, definitely not dead. He's definitely not dead. No. No, no. I, in no, fact, no, I would put no. him in those later scenes. I mean, uh, I just didn't. Yeah. I just forgot. I, 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 I think Lancaster would have noticed if Don York had died quite a Yeah. 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 Right. Oh, but brother. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Thomas. Oh, Thomas. Um, and uh, there was another what one. What is the Edmund? Another one. Edmund. Edmund. Ed, yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> Never heard of him. Uh, <laughs> anything else? Um, no, I'm going to therefore close uh, this session on and this week on Thomas of Woodstock. We will be coming back to Thomas of Woodstock because it's such a great play. Uh, it's very playable despite um, its problems uh, with the absence of an ending and the fact you need a horse. But uh, the horse, frankly, is a very solvable problem. And indeed, the ending is a very solvable problem. And uh, otherwise, it's just constantly... Um, giving us something to play with uh so yeah we will be coming back to woodstock um looking in probably in detail at certain things and we may work towards a third look and a third look is where we uh, we actually produce our a cut version uh that we might want to put on stage and test the flow of that um and uh, because this is an incredibly long play we'll have to put some cuts in somewhere um, and so actually starting to make some artistic decisions towards the future production that will happen in the future, because it will happen, because I will it. Um, and <laughs> as is my will, so mote it be. Uh, and on that, uh, that note of uh, hope for the future, uh, I'm going to say thank you to all the wonderful performers today, present or indeed who had to dip out early, and goodbye. Bye. Bye.